Hello everybody, thank you for joining me and welcome back. If you are familiar with Yenersberg tutorials, you have already noticed, I'm sure, that I have four grandchildren. Two of them has birthday in January, which is one boy, one girl, and the girl wants me to do this blue blonde as a birthday cake. So of course I will do it and I will also do one tutorial for you. I usually let them decide what they want, but I don't let them to do the final decision because I like to keep some decision making point that I can choose something and I can make tutorials. I choose this one because the Smurfet is not uh, standing, it's sitting on the mushroom, it's quite easy to manage and also I have some other elements here like mushroom and I like grass and everything to add more sort of detail to the cake. All right. So once we have the uh, idea of what we're going to do, we have to make further decisions. Uh, which part of this, this scenario will be the cake and which part will be the other things like sugar and pasta, etc. So it would be a good idea to make the mushroom as a cake and Smurfet as a figurine because the Smurfet has got much more details and I can just do better job than if it's only out of sugar. All right. So, but there is a problem here. If I do the mushroom on the cake, is it big enough? Is it sort of volume enough to serve that like 10, 15 people? So as you see, it's not. So what I do, I make two more copy of this, all right? One smaller and one larger. So if I take this mushroom, this one, it's about almost 18 centimeter white cake, which is quite large. And I take this Smurfit on top like this, then I will have a smaller figure to manage easier and then the larger cake to do, and then final design is still the same. So this is what we're going to do. All right, so let's look at now what we need here. I have some knife, some palette knife, so spatulas, a plastic knife to manage the cake, like the shaping the cake, etc. And I have also one deep uh, bowl here to fill up with uh, some hot or warm water to clean the knife all the time. And I have some bits and pieces, a couple of modeling tools, which is not specifically selected, but I will just use some of them. I will even use that uh, skewers also for modeling tool. All right, scissor, blade, always I have it on the table. And also I will have some of these uh, lollipop uh, uh, skewers that I may just use it as a kind of flower stem. All right, and the PVC pipe for rolling a starch in this bowl, uh, and then also plastic sort of like a leveling uh, tool and then uh, poking uh, with will be done with the acupuncture needle, which is very, very useful. All right, and this board here. So let's talk about this. I have 30 centimeter, nine millimeter thick MDF and covered with brown velvet and also covered again with the cellophane sheet to protect the, the board so we can keep the cellophane sheet till to the end and we can remove exactly from the side where the cake is finished. All right, so of course we need some construction. All right, so this is my solution. I have about six, I guess this is about six millimeters, uh, but I will find out and write into the material list. All right, so I have some uh, bolts and nuts over here. This two will go to here, in the hole here, I have just hole here. And then uh, this one goes in between here. So that is, let's say, like this. This is the board. Imagine there's a board here, all right? And after that, that one here will hold that piece of cutboard, which is about two millimeters uh, thick cutboard, it's quite solid. And I make a hole in here, exactly this one can go in, all right? And after that, this uh, nut will hold it. So that little thing's actually, uh, it sounds like it's not good inside a cake, but no one will able to remove this turning so many hundred times that go around and then remove that plastic, uh, remove that uh, uh, all those other parts on it and then have this one in the cake. So at the same time, when I do this kind of things, I'll also cover with the chocolate, all right? I will even protect the cake from this metal by using some straws that the metal doesn't touch the cake, all right? And after that, I will have that one, probably I have to bring this a bit more down that to show you. I will have this one here and that blue plastic here. All right, and after that, we will have one more time in the neck to hold the heavy hat here. So that will be then practically 
that construction and the extension over here also will be long enough to hold the heavy head in the right place. All right, so what are they? This is actually just a plastic a lid from a kind of container. Uh, it's easy to cut with the scissor. I can cut them into the right shape. I will do that later on, but you see that how easy I can cut. So it's a very good idea because it's plastic, it's not metal. It doesn't sort of like hurt that if you touch the cake, it will be good, all right? So that's all we need for the uh, tools and material. And these little plastic things, of course, I have to get rid of right away. It doesn't go in the cake, all right? So I will bring now the rest of the recipes and ingredients to show you what else we need. Let's start from the mud cake. I have here uh, 25 centimeters uh, mud cake, which is about four and I think four and a half centimeter high. So this is 1.2 kilo mixture baked in 25 centimeter ring or cake pan. So usually I use a mud cake or white mud cake for this kind of cakes because it is nice and moisture at the same time firm enough to carve and firm enough to hold the weights on it. All right. I will cut this cake into two, two slices. So I will put it on the table separate and I will cut different sizes of circles. So as you see that here, there's one and two here and then there's one, two, three, four layers, I think should be enough, maybe five. So all of them has got different sizes of circles that I've just put together. So that's why I will ignore that shape and I will just cut it off and then cut other circles out of that bigger circles. Over here I have mixture of fondants and then gum pastes. So the fondants I will use to cover the cake part and I will use the gum paste to make the figure in. So the blue and then the blonde, the yellow and the white for the dress and the, for the head and then the green uh, actually for, this is not gum paste, this is also uh, fondant. So these are the fondant parts, all right? And then this is the gum paste parts, all right? So, um, and I have here, I have a couple of the pastelier flowers here, uh, daisies. I'm gonna also decorate the lower part of the cake. One more thing I'd like to tell you, once I finish carving the cake, the two parts of the mushroom, there will be some offcuts and I will also use it on the lower part as a ground, as a grass part, so it will add some more cake into that uh, portion instead. Um, over here I have also a ganache that is about one kilo. Uh, it's, not a, it's in a yogurt cup, but I always do that. I keep the ganache into these kind of little containers and put them in the freezer and then I don't have to, I don't have to cook all the time new. So I just take it out from the freezer and this is actually probably a couple of weeks old and it's just in the perfect condition so I can start already uh, shaping the cake and then sandwiching the cake with that. So let's do that. Clear up the table and bring the, uh, cut this one into two pieces and start shaping the cake. I have already cut that sponge into two pieces. Uh, hopefully that's enough for everything, I guess. Uh, then I have also chosen my rings to cut. So that ring is the enough for the second uh, level, but not the first level. So I'm going to cut uh, the first one of the top, top of the mushroom and the first one of the lower of the mushroom from the whole piece because the other smaller pieces we may just join together. So uh, this is slightly larger than this. All right. So I'm just going to cut approximately estimating the size. Mushroom is not really 100% like a equal like a symmetrical shape it can be a little bit uh, uh, crooked doesn't matter all right so that's the first one of the large size of the mushroom and then this is the second one of the mushroom and this is the lower part so this should be complete one piece all right maybe not so this is the second one you can already start sandwiching that Okay, and then after that, this is the lower part. That's here. All right, let's go and do something with that. A little bit of ganache. Doesn't have to be too much. This ganache is really good condition. I didn't even remix it. It's just a, as soon as defrosted, it's just perfect. All right. The recipe you can find in the recipe section, of course. All right, so this is the lower part, that's the upper part. You can cut this one from here. Okay. Is this good enough? Yes. Doesn't have to be exact, doesn't matter. That's good. All right, then this one. So as I said, this is not enough, so I'm gonna to join together. Good for that. All right, 
we have to go one more this one to go okay then the this one is the top one I believe yes Good, looks good. So, now a little bit of attachments. This one here. All right. A little bit of carving. Make sure that we follow the shape, obviously. Okay, all those carving parts that I put it inside the gaps here. You can also use this stuff. Okay. More ganache. So this is on the only first coat, right? I'm going to do more coating later on. Okay, watch what I do now. I'm going to take some cling wrap here. And coat the whole lot like this. and give the final shaping. So as you see over here, there's a gap here. That's what I'm going to create here on, with the cling wrap. Don't have to really try so hard to get it, everything according to carving. All right. That's it. So this one will go to the fridge now, get a little bit more firmer so I can do further work on it. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with this one and I get back to it. So after shaping these two, I have this much of offcuts. I'm gonna use this one, as I said, for a grass part, sort of a ground part, right? And there are just a bit of two thick, so I'm gonna cut them a little bit more thinner, right? They will be all just joined together anyway, so it doesn't matter, right? Just cut a bit thinner pieces. Like this, all right, and then placing here. It's an extra cake. It will be just nice to do that, no problem. All right, this one we can put on the second layer. Nice. All right, 
more ganache. Ganache, a bit more. All right, again, I take a cling wrap, put it on. So, push it down to the shape that what you want. We can still coat the coat this part with the fondant and cut accordingly. A bit more outer line. Okay. That's not a problem. So this one all goes to fridge now and then wait for a while till nice and firm then we're going to start coating this cake. All the cakes was long enough in the fridge to get really nice and firm. When the cakes uh, was uh, soft with four getting in the fridge the cling wrap does a good job but whatever you push it may come back because the cake is inside very soft. But after cool down you can even shape that very nicely using some extra tools. Even that by hand you can push things in and out, but uh, not out, only inwards probably, okay? And then just make it nice and shaped, all right? So after that, I want to have this corner nicely in, roundish, okay? We're gonna do a little bit more touch up. So this is done. Let's remove the cling wrap now. See this, how nice is it, okay? So I like to use a little bit more ganache to, to cover some of those gaps, those little holes, all right? Uh, doing that with a very soft scraper, it's very effective, like this, see? So all that I want to do now it's not really a masking masking you know just a, a going through with a very soft scraper closing all those little holes and make the surface a little bit more smoother all right that's what i'm going to do so this is the purpose of using that uh, extra cellophane sheet on the board on the velvet so we can work on ganache and chocolate anything nothing get dirty over here once the cake is finished we can remove the sides it's also a very good idea when we're passing from ganache working out to the fondant starting, all the boards has to be clean or change. So uh, this is already cleaned. Uh, I, I just take it out, clean up and put it back again. So we have to put this one on here. So that's the clean board here. I like to put a little bit of ganache here, just the sponges glue on top. All right, all right. like this. And after that, we take this one out and placing approximately in the center. That board has a, already a hole in the center. When we're pushing that long threaded rod, it will go through. All right, so that is done. That is dirty. Now we're gonna uh, clean the table also and start rolling the fondant. Green fondant, always give a bit of neat before you roll. All right, we have starch on top. I already place every bit of paste over here, all the gum paste and fondants on the scale and take a note. After the cake is finished, I put them back again on the scale and find out how many gram I use it. And I give you an amount, how much you should start with. All right. So that's already good enough. Place it on it, like this. That's not really a big matter how to do this. Um, knife. I like to have a little bit of sort of like special cut. Right. Touch a little bit corners. Right. Fork. Starting from outside. I give it sort of like a grass texture, all right, with the fork.
So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this off-cut screen and add a little bit of red inside, turn this green to a, like a leaf green, like an early green, and then create some little grass pieces. And then after that is I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to use them at the end. See the color? How is the difference? A little bit more early now. So this is the grass, how I do. Very simple. You take a very sharp plate and then just go like a diagonal cuts like this. Parallel cuts. Doesn't matter how, just carry on. And after that, you go other direction. Join the end bits together again. Okay, very quickly. You don't have to be too careful. Look. That's it. Then move the both side like this. All right, so that's preparations of the grass. We're going to use them at the end. We don't have to use all of them, but we're going to use some. All right, so that's ready. Let it dry so we can lift up. Now we can start constructing cake. As you remember, we have this hole underneath. I just put this one in so we see where it is coming up. So that's the coming up. All right, so I have this, remove that little nut here, and I just leave it about a little bit more than the, the thickness of the board so I can put the other nut in the other side. Don't make it too long, otherwise the, the screw will come out too long, longer than the legs and it scratch the table. So I'm just going to push this one in here, like this. Let's go through already, and then put it on. Not long enough. Like this. And put the other nut on the other side. And I have my range already. And tighten up. Next, I like to coat the lower part of the, of the mushroom, the stem of the mushroom. So it is a cream color. You have to knead, again, the fondant quite a, sort of a bit to get this stage that it stretch nicely like this. So that is enough to have to start rolling and coating the cakes. All right. You only need once the starch, you don't have to do all the time. The only thing is what you have to do, you have to make it, after a very short rolling, you have to remove uh, the fondant from the table and move a little bit, right? That's it, that's already big enough. Put it on. Secure the corners first. All right, to that, push it down. Okay, then from down level it. The corners. Underneath the stem, a little bit sort of roundish, so that's why I push this one in like this. All right, a bit of bubble here. That's done. All right, next thing is we're going to place this one very carefully in here, make sure it's in the center. All right, nice and clean, only one step, and immediately. Clean that up so the mud cake doesn't drop everywhere. Right? And after that, I use uh, straws, as I said, to cover that uh, separate between the metal bar and then the, the cake. I just push it inside here, all the way in. Okay, does it go in? Yes, it is already. Right, after that, you have to move a little bit up. And cut. Okay. 
Okay, put it back here. All right, what I like to do, I want to put my next nuts inside here. So the nut has to be sank in uh, and with the level, even can be just one millimeter down. And I'll cover it with this one, a little bit of chocolate so that uh, the nut doesn't touch the, the cake, all right? So we are ready actually for the next level, which will be the red upper part of the mushroom. I already rolled my red and also rolled a very thin uh, pink, which is the, this part. And I'm gonna select some of those uh, round cutters to do a little bit of like patching work. So this round one, big one, comes here. Uh, that should be somewhere around here. All right. And then I try to follow what's happening here. All right. And this one here. This one there. A little bit bigger. Here, here this. All right. And then after that, two small one. One here. One here. Something very small. And there. All right. A couple of more other ones on the other side. One here. Maybe just one more here. No, this one. Maybe a small one. Okay, once this one happened, push this one down and then go over the roller again. So just really push them together into one level. All right? All right, look at this. Okay. And this cake is wet enough. Lifting up and placing in the right place, like that, and then slowly put it down. Now, when this happens, I'm not pushing too much on the corner because I'm going to cut slightly larger and push underneath after that. So it's larger than the, the corner. All right, come on this one. And then now slowly push underneath. That's it. So that should be the, the front side, this one. And then the Smurfette sitting on this area. All right, and let's bring the other one now and put it on. So first thing, I like to have an indication where do I pluck this one. Uh, I lift this one up and there's a hole underneath, as we know that the cutboard in there. And then pluck this one in and then see that nice and straight as possible. All right where it's coming out. All right, that should be good. Mm, all right. I want to have a little bit more backwards. Yeah, there. Okay, take it out again. So there's a kind of uh, line in there that we can follow. A little bit of chocolate here. So that's glued nicely, okay, and find that gap and slowly targeting that the girl is sitting over here and this big one going on this side here, 
and then go slowly in. All right, we are landed. Good. This is a little bit more uh, shorter than what I expected. The keg is actually a bit higher, but it doesn't really matter because this is already long enough to hold the whole body. And we can always pop one more uh, skewer in there to get the extension to reach the inside head. Another nut in there. All the way, sink it on top of the uh, mushroom and then make it level. All right. So we can do this one with the holding the nut with the scissor and then keep turning. That's already in. So I put it like a slightly lower than the, the surface this time because I expect a little bit more sinkage uh, on this on this cake. We didn't put any chocolate uh, skin around, so it may just uh, settle down for uh, maybe one or two millimeter. That's why I will leave this one open now. I'm not going to use that uh, blue uh, blue washer yet. I will decide this later on. I will make sure that uh, the, the the nut is standing on the right position so that the smurfette is not floating in the air. So I also uh, would like to tell you one more time. I have also green uh, the uh, straw in between this point till the lower part is also protected from the metal. I didn't show you this part, but now you know what I did. Now, before we continue with the Smurfette, I would like to share with you one secret. You can pause the video now and roll back about a couple of seconds and you will see the difference between now and then. So, uh, you can try to find out, but I'll let you know what is this. When I was planning this tutorial, this cake, uh, I tried to be very precise with the the length of the road because I don't want to have this road come out of the forehead of the uh, Smurfette. So that's why I like to have the uh, road exactly finished somewhere uh, upper part of the head but not coming out of it. Then I make uh, two mistakes. I didn't calculate the grass, number one. The grass is already about two centimeter and I also did the mushroom about two centimeter too high. So that makes the precise calculated road about four centimeter lower, then I did not have enough uh, the road to connect the head uh, with the nut and with the washer, with the blow washer, so that uh, some uh, part of the uh, road can go inside the head and can rest on the blow washer and then have a nice and secure, uh, stable hold. So uh, that's why it was quite necessary that I put the cake in the fridge for a while and I dismantle it after cool it down and I changed the, the old road with the new one. Now the road is four centimeter longer. I feel much better now because I have really security to finish the figure in nice and uh, strong. And also I feel extra better because I share with you my secret. So mistakes is, uh, is always done when we're doing cakes. And especially when I do it, I like to share with you because if I do that, you will have less chance to have the same mistake. Now let's start doing the Smurfit now. Now I'm going to do this Smurfit uh, step by step and every part I do I will put on a scale and find out how many grams is it and I write down exactly on the same spot so you can follow my direction just putting things on the scale. Uh, first of all I like to place this little blue washer which I did just now over here just in case that we don't have any more chance to put it on. All right. So that's already securing this part and also uh, make this little platform, little platform that Smurfette can sit much better and firmly here. All right. And actually the blue color is not bad because the, uh, the skin also blue so it's not going to be seen much. All right. So first thing I like to do, I want to do that, uh, the shoes. Two times egg shape. It is actually pretty straightforward. So the two shoes, like egg shape, I'm gonna make U-shaped legs then going around this post. And after that, I'm gonna make one uh, sort of conical shape uh, skirt and I flatten up the sides and I've cut some, cut some uh, 
what they call uh, frills with that, with some lace with this. And after that, I'm going to cut the neck with this and then also the, the shoulder parts also with that. So uh, we're going to place another nut here, this nut here, uh, just underneath the head. And then with this one, uh, can secure the head nicely. And this one is about like sort of egg shape here. I'm going to place it on and I'm not going to do other than just the mouth. And then tomorrow morning we'll continue because I want that head is, is, is settled and firm a little bit so we can push the hair without damaging anything. All right. So that's the plan. So two things, two times shoe. All right. If you're doing two things at the same time, you better portion them first, so you don't have to really worry about later on how big was it. All right. It's slightly flat, I think. Too small. So we have to get some more. This is the proportion what I'm looking for. Cut in half. Do it again. So the back one is back side is a bit more smaller, like egg shape. And it's just flat. So that should be good. That's one shoe. That's the second shoe. They are done. All right, now it's the legs. Eleven gram each. That's it. All right. By the way, those uh, gum paste that I'm using now was actually fondant. I just add half a percent tylose inside it. So if you're looking for like a um, 100 gram fondant, half a gram of, of uh, uh, tylose. So um, if you have one kilo fondant, you have to put five gram of tylose. So we will have this, like this, and then two, two sides, a little bit bubbly, because we're going to cut. Maybe this is good already. Yep. So let me try. That will be then the, the feet flat here and flat here. Let me check. Oh no, this is too short. So we do it again. That's much better. Right now, again, 
and to cut this one like this and this one like that. So basically the very important thing is here when you look at the part and you have to see a mother shape. So this two legs here uh, is actually just like one piece like that and then with bubbles in two, two ends and cutting with the, uh, with the blade to create that, that look. All right. All right, let's see first. Turn on like this and put one leg like that. One leg like that, another leg on top of it like this. That should be okay. All right, a little bit more longer. Now, I like to glue the, the shoe into the leg. Slightly water here and slightly water here, but not too much, okay? It makes it really, really like a sticky, all right? Also here, a little bit here, and a little bit there. You can also use egg white if you like. Okay. So this one goes here. And this one goes here. Okay. Now, this has to go like this. What I like to do, I want to put a little bit of chocolate in this area to secure that, that shoe so it stays in the right spot. Just a dot, like that. Then, glue this first, go around, and put this on top of it. Some more chocolate to the other one, so it can stay. Maybe just a dot, okay? So that little water, it's able to stick that two piece together. Okay, the leg is done. Now let's do the skirt. I just done a trial. The skirt is only 40 gram, so white again. When you do this, uh, one hand is flat, one hand like a little bit more like a squeeze like this. So this will be like a, a rolling like a bread roll. It makes it like a round. And this is like combining part over here in one side, okay? So the combining part, of course, will be underneath, right? Like this. Just do that. There's a pretty small skirt, like, like this size, right? 40 gram should be enough. And then quite a small top. And then first of all, you pinch the sides, have a start. All right. And then take a small roller and then roll this out really nice and flat and quite large. So it can cover all those, the leg part where it's starting and also give you enough frills. I go twice around. I'm not going to cut it because I like this way we look. All right, then what I do, I'm just going to get this little nozzle and then cut little holes. Normally there's no hole there, but I like to make it like this. It looks much better. 
Okay. Don't just push it and take it out. You have to turn a little bit, circling around so the cutting happens. That's it. A little bit of enhancement you need. Just poke it in here. Okay. Now, make it flat. The chest. All right. And then get this cutter, small cutter, but maybe one fifteen millimeter, and then cut this the neck part like that. Just like this. All right. Then enhance it. Bring back to the right shape. So these are actually a good thing, the, the sleeves here, the straps here around, because that will hide the connection between neck and the arms. Right? So um, make a little hole here, just make a kind of like understanding where the, where the road has to go through. Okay, controlly. So that is what I like to do, um, push it down. Push it down and then frill this skirt a little bit before it's too dry. So as you see that over here is like a nice curl sound. Okay, I'm quite happy with this one now. Push that a bit. Good, now we have to do the neck. This is the neck I like to do. It is about three gram, I already write down there. So I strongly recommend you that to get one of this one from internet. It is a, a very small a spoon scale. Uh, it measures one tenth of a gram. And it's very, very accurate, right? Especially that we communicate with the gram on the uh, figurines. It will be very important to have one. Okay, just a bowl like this, and then this will fit. This will fit inside here. But before I put it there, I'm just going to make a hole here, so it goes easily. All right, like that, and put it in. Almost like a screwing in there. Push it in. So it fits nicely. I use this time maybe this one as a modeling tool. Now I like to squeeze a little bit to create the neck over the chest, over the sort of like a, yeah, this one here. And then just roll it down to fit that area, okay? Yeah, take your time a little bit. That's the front side. That's it. See that's how this nicely fit over here. And the neck also go around the screw, around the, the rod, and it's just the right size. A little bit thicker than is, uh, as it is there, but it doesn't really matter, right? Now, um, our critical part is here. Make sure that this is in the center, balanced. I'm happy with this one now. Uh, let me just do some thinking about the, the hat and get back to you. Now, I have to be a little bit innovative here. I like to hide this nut and this washer inside the hat. So what I mean is this. Let me explain that. So that, let's say the, the head is like egg shape here, all right? And then I want to have that the nut inside the head and also that washer inside the head. So I like to create something about that shape, that screw goes inside here. 
all right, so that uh, the, the head has to rest on the platform. All right, let me just uh, give you a small little sort of like a, a solution for that. You may just do something else, but I think this is the way that I like to do it now. So this is the, the washer and this is the nut, all right, this is the nut. So I like to have a piece of blue and after that make it really flat. Okay, like this. Just about the size of the washer. All right. And after that, put a bit of moisture here. Again, quite sticky. So you can just touch like this, make it sticky. All right. And then push it on top of the nut. On top of the nut. And then grab the, the washer on the other side. All right. So this is actually what's happening here. All right. Let me just show you. I need a bit of starch. There we go. Now is my hands not anymore so sticky. All right. Just hide that nut inside that sugar. At the same time, the what do you call the the blue gum paste covering that. All right. So. Let's get this hole here available that we can screw in. All right, that's it. So that's actually the beginning part. We start putting this one inside here. Okay, now we turn. Turn till touch down. A little bit more. So it's already touched down. Then I squish a little bit more. So I make sure that the lower part really flat. All right. I think we are just ready to get this bigger one, the big egg-shaped head on top. All right. So that is the platform. From the side, you can see it like a little bit like this, and then top goes inside, and the head goes inside, and sink it in a little bit, and it will stay. All right. Now, how many grams is the head? That's the bit of like question mark here. Let's start from something like this. Get every time I do something, I just make it very rough and then see how is it look like. Then after that, I just make it correct. So that is the head. Mm, maybe a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. All right. All what I want to do, I want to do an egg shape, the head, and shape the mouth, and I leave everything else to tomorrow. All right. Again, this way. So that's the joining part. That's where we're going to put it in. Let's see. Is this a good shape? Let's put it on, see how it looks like. I'm not so sure. I think I like to do slightly bigger. All right. Just a little bit bigger. Neat, 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 neat. First of all, make a perfect round ball. Then you can shape a little bit more after that. Yes, that's good. All right. I think I like to put it on now. All right. Just put a bit of water here. Just a little bit of water. So we can connect the two, two and bit of and paste together. All right. I'm happy. See, now I'm touching down and then joining that flat platform into the head. 
So if you don't go really look underneath, you don't you don't see nothing at all. And it looks quite interesting because it is a kind of like a gravity defined at the same time. So such a big head is standing on, on very small, very small neck. All right. That is good. So I just want to make now the the mount. Very small. I like to have a spoon. Yep, and then this part will do. That's it, yeah, there. And I like to add the nose after I do the eyes. So just leave it like this. And uh, what I like to do now, before I stop doing things today, I like to do the, this arm and finish touching to the base here. And then this arm, I just like to model it, when let it dry, so it can stand till tomorrow, can hold the handle. I just measured the one of the arm, it's eight and a half gram. Eight and a half gram is eight plus eight is 16, 17 gram divided by two. So let's measure this one again. 17.9. That is pretty much 17, like this, all right. Again, sausage shape, cut in two. I like to do the arms one by one. It's a better idea because the other one will take a bit time to, to organize it. So just one round ball first and then sausage. One side thicker. Like this, and this is flat, coming to the shoulder, okay, and then this is the hand, flat, flat like this, and then creating that thumb. This gun pace is quite flexible, doesn't dry so quickly, so you can take your time to do that. Right. So always make the fingernail important. There's some sharpness on one edge, but we just got right. And then here is the first three fingers. One and three. So a bit more roundish. Roundish, roundish, roundish and the fingernail. And this one goes up, this one goes down like this. So it's got this kind of, kind of uh, situation here. Yeah. Right. And then enhance it a bit. Don't you rush. Don't rush. Don't glue it right away, you touch, and then make a sort of like syrupy end. And after that, this one here. And you can also put a little bit of chocolate here to secure just a dot. That is done. Let's do the other side. I'll side a bit tricky because I want to have this hand holding this candle. Yeah? And if you do it right away, it's never hold it, it has to dry till tomorrow. Normally she's holding the hair, but I would just like to have she holds the candle. Again, the arm will sit over here. It's quite flat, like that. That's good. Okay. Done. And the fingers are in position here. Cut. 
Kinder. Da war schon ein Kinder. Oh yeah. So time get blind. So I just want to make it like that. And after that I will glue with the it's just melting the candle a little bit and then just glue it in the right. Like this. That's good. And then the arm will come here. I push it to get the shape, but I'm not gluing. Right? Just like this. Okay. And let it go. So I stay with it like that. Okay. So that is all for today. Uh, I'm going to now leave everything nice and dry because as you see that the head is quite fixed but it's still moving. I want it a little more dry so because we have a very big uh, bulky hair coming tomorrow. So I just want to have a little bit more resistance when I push things around. Okay, this is the next day and uh, everything nice and firm, a little bit more firmer, it's not completely dry, but I think it's firm enough that we can add a couple of things on it and we don't worry about uh, deforming something else, all right? And the right hand, uh, what we did yesterday, is uh, nice and firm, it's firm enough to put it on. Maybe I will take a little bit of like a small piece of spaghetti to put it on that is will be quick and uh, secure hold. So uh, let's start with the eyes and the nose. So the eyes, as you see over here, looking right way and then the half the eyelids upper eyelids are closing and then she's saying look at me how beautiful i am so we're gonna just create this kind of look or right, instead of just making two uh, eyeball and then sort of like a side by side uh, and also important here is just the the pupil is uh, uh, black and we don't have to worry about any other color in there all right start from the white It will be just estimations. Given it. This quite big eyes. A little bit more. I think a little bit more. This much is good. Egg shape. Ah, same. Flatten it a bit. A little bit this one also. Alright. Put it side by side so we can see what's happening. Okay. Now it's the black. Okay, flat, flat, this is too big. Flat, okay, now. This one here. This one here. Push. Okay, now I like to cut from this way, sort of like this. All right, that wasn't right. That's too big here. Okay, that's better. Uh, do the blue one also, the upper lip. So this is exactly the same thing. I will do one egg shape, flatten and cut in two. This 
This time I use this part. Okay. Turn it also. Like this, but I like to make it a bit more thicker so that the eyeball stay inside, not sort of in the same level. Okay. Yep. Okay, let's go now. We're putting a little bit of moisture in that area. Bits. Just put it on. Big enough to hold it by the hand, my fingers. Side by side touching. Uh, normally the mouth is a little bit more going this way, so it just doesn't matter, not in the center. And this one to put it on. I like to make these blue ones a little bit larger. That's good. That's good. But now, what we have to do, just have to worry about the, so like these uh, side lines here. One, two, three. It's not effective, but I'm gonna put more sort of black lines later on. All right, nose. As I said, little spaghetti, first water. That will help a lot. Nose, another egg. Pretty flat at the touching point. All right, a little bit of water here, just a little bit. That's it. And there is also a little little dots on both sides. Just one here. And one here. All right, now the eyes and the nose in place. We're going to worry about now the hair. So let's look into this hair part, and then, uh, but not only looking, also saying things. What is the uh, what is the reality that what we can do? So uh, the hair is around the head, where the hair touching to the head, quite flat, but. After that is very large here and very large on the extension here. So I can do individual segments that looks like that. It's a thin start and a very bold and very big uh, at the end. But I'm not so sure we can get this like a smooth, nice, big round piece pinch. So that's why what I like to do, uh, I want to put a lifter in this area and everything else I can do just flat and then marking with the knife and placing on and see what you can do. We can always start adding on and take it off and we can see that uh, this matching will be right down. All right, so a uh, 40 gram piece, I already tried, it works. So just a, just sort of like a covering, covering that lower part, that's it, all right. Something like this, all right. 
put a bit of water here. Make sure that we're not going to close that uh, the arm which we have to put later on. And also don't make it too watery. Everything will be slide down, right? Nice and sticky. Okay. So this is what I'm talking about. Something like that. This stays, yes. And also, like this part, the arm, still available to put it on. Okay, it's this. Now, next thing to do is approximately about how many ground pieces I give you the amount. Around 6.67 .6 gram pieces, maybe let's say 10 gram. Okay, go for 10 gram pieces. Doing this. Pretty flat, but still in one side, a little bit thinner, right? Like this, push it down. Put some oil. Clean knife. To make a sort of flow and work, you have to clean the knife time to time. I'm not cutting, only marking. Okay, then turn around the other side. All right, that's the first one. And also a little bit of water. Okay, we're gonna start from here, right? Push this one here and turn it like that. So this is the first one. I have a feeling that we're doing the right thing. All right, so second one. Let's check another 10 gram. Yes. One side thin, one side thicker. Nice and polished. Clean knife. The other side. Let's go. I think just right. All right, one more. I like to do two more, so I just want to make not too big. So I want to put first the first the front one, and then the other one after that because it's coming really out, right? As I said, not only looking at it, also seeing things.
Okay, as you see over here, that's a bit of turn like this, all right? This is what I want to do. I think we can spray a bit. On it. Okay, this is important. Okay, one more. This is a little bit larger. Okay, again. Yay, that is pretty good. So I'm going to continue the other side and got make it. So the last patch on the other side. As I said, we have to consider a few things. First of all, uh, there's a very big uh, the hair coming on the top as a kind of top part. And then uh, there's also arm here. So that's why the last piece, we have to be quite careful where we put it. Uh -huh. So this is like this. And then goes like this. And probably turn it like that after that. Okay. Let's put the arm there and see how it looks like. Yeah, that sits properly here. Yeah, can manage that, no problem at all. But I'm not going to do it now because it's in my way still. I just put it on and see that sitting on it. It's perfect. Yeah. Good. So now we have to do the top part. Uh, top part is very important because it's the most important characteristic, the fringe. I think I should not aim to make it only in one piece, a couple of pieces overlapping and then see how it looks like. First one. Or I tell you something, that's I can do another lifter here. Yeah? Because this one what we did here, it just works perfectly as a lifter, and I think I should put another lifter on the top. It's a, like a last last spontaneous decision. So let's put it over here first, right? Like that. Just as a lifter. Okay, leave it there. Okay, a little bit. All right, let's go. I think it's too big. Alright, second piece. I think a little bit larger one, this should be good now. Okay. Maybe a little bit more larger. Okay. Check it out. It's coming like this. Right. 
So that goes like that. And then like this. Yeah. I think we've done a good job. Right. A good job here. So just what we have to worry about now, the, the hat and the little red flower. Yeah. Beanie is 45 gram. I already did one and, and collect again, so it's just right size. 45 gram, give it a good knit. Make a ball. The connecting part underneath. Doing like this, make a kind of like triangular shape. Uh, but this is not too sharp, conical, all right, after that, bend this one like this, look like this, and after that we use again, uh, as I said, just a skewer as a modeling tool, this way, okay, give you a little bit more thinner sides so I can hug the hair nicely. Yes, that should be right. A bit of water. That's nice. So just to the flower also here. Three pieces of round fondant. Use your hand as a kind of flower pad. Put it over here. Ball tool. Push it down once. Two. Three, ten. Okay, a little bit of water. The flower comes here around this area. Okay. One, two, and three. And a little black ball in the middle. Just the water. Put it here. Okay, our smart fit uh, is already ready. Uh, so I'm going to continue now adding these uh, little flowers and finishing off the cake. Okay, let's remove that protection uh, line first. We do that just by tearing. If you pull that in the right direction, you tear exactly from the edge. That's it. I just said we just have to add flowers, but we have still a, a left uh, arm to, to add. So what I did, I just melt a little bit of uh, a candle from the end bit and glue it into the hand so it's holding nicely. And also poke about 3-4 uh, cm of the uh, spaghetti inside. And also poke a spaghetti in here, that is where the, the gap is ready. I will take a little bit of white chocolate, all right, and then pipe in this hole. And also pipe behind the hair here so that the arm can be held properly all right so that is a one-time job you cannot just do it a few times all right just poke it in here find a hole here wherever it is 
and then poke it in and hold it and hold it and I will spray it just for cooling down All right. and then the arm is already holding All right. should be good all right, now, uh, I will put a couple of grasses first. Just a bit of white chocolate. Don't have to use so many of them. Just a couple, make sure it's nice and clean. And then maybe one more here. Let's see what else we have. Maybe this one. Yep. One little one. holds and then this uh, little k-pop sticks will hold my flowers on the right distance so attach to the dark chocolate a little bit and then pack it on here of course only one time let it set and then another one maybe just in front here Okay, now, white chocolate, white chocolate, a little bit of white chocolate also. That holds. Last one in front here. We don't need to have a stem, just put it on here. So I think all what I have to do later on, just write the birthday wishes in front, then it's finished. So let me give you a turnaround, so clockwise and anti-clockwise. You must realize that I had a couple of more hair over here to make it much more fuller. So that was the birthday cake for my granddaughter, Smurfette sitting on the red mushroom. So, uh, and also a tutorial for you. I hope she will like it, although so you find some few tricks that you haven't seen before and you can make use of it. And thank you so much for watching me today. God bless you all. Till the next tutorial. Bye for now.